Okay, can you guys hear me? So if you guys can hear me at uh, Harnell, can you guys uh, hit your reaction and put the thumbs up? Let me know that you guys can hear me on your side. If you're not able to hear me, then uh, what you need to do is probably check your audio to make sure that's the case. Okay. What was that? So uh, we're going to be doing, we're testing a couple things out. So these are my students from Parnell. Right? So they're going to be joining us on lecture nights, uh, some of them. And uh, to kind of make it easier, they pick up everything that you guys hear on the other side. So it's okay that they're able to hear you guys because I want them to hear the questions that you guys ask and stuff like that. But we want to try to keep the other discussions out if we're in the middle of talking about the lecture, right? So like, they're probably hearing everything that's happening over there. So I'll have to tell them in the back of the hey guys, but we will do it Friday. Okay. Um, but it's still the classroom. We're going to try to get it so that everybody can hear it. We know that we do have some audio issues. We're going to try to remedy that, okay? Okay, so let's get started. We're going to actually start on the chapter two lecture. But before we get started, uh, what I'm going to do about the Mentos lab, not chapter two, chapter three, chapter three lecture, because that's the one you guys had in hand, right? And then, and then we'll talk about the chapter two lecture next week. Your homework assignment is technically yours was due today. However, it's going to be pushed back to next week because there's stuff that hasn't been covered in the classroom. Okay? So, so don't stress out. Okay? Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. How was your week so far? It's Wednesday, something, right? Okay, so we're going to start off with scientific notation. So this is just Scientific notation is uh, is a way for us to write things a little bit simpler. Okay? And you guys, we've kind of talked about it. You've seen it. We've all seen it since you're like in uh, middle school or in uh, high school. And so there's always a form to it. And if you guys remember the very few problems that you guys did at the very beginning of the homework assignments, it actually dealt with scientific notation. So the concept of writing scientific notation. So if you take a look at it, we have, let's say our numbers are A, B, C, and D. They're actual numbers. And we're going to write it times 10 to the E. Now, the thing is, is that A can't be zero, right? K, A has to be a number, okay? So if we have a number like, That's right, Chris. The homework is not homework number two is not due today. Homework number one for you guys should be due today. Okay, and also your lab is due today. The safety lab does our return next time, right? Okay, so let's say we have a number like. Uh, No. 
Okay. Um, so let's say we have a number that's 0 0.053. Now we know that this isn't scientific notation because we're starting out with those zeros, right? So the way that we would change this to scientific notation is we count over until we get to that very first number. With that decimal over to the very first number. So then we count how many places over that we went. So that's one, that's two. So if we're moving it to the right, that's going to be 10 to the negative. Because we know that the number is smaller than one. Because this is 0 0.5, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.053, smaller than one. Yeah. So anytime that it's smaller than one, you're going to use the negative for the exponent. Okay. So if we have a number like this, We're going to do same thing. Only thing we're going to assume that this that decimal point will start here. So we just count over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we end up with 2.5 times 10. Seven. So, but the key is, is that it always has that format. You have a number, a non-zero number, a decimal, and then you can have numbers followed. Now, the beauty of using exponents, there's a lot of things that come in, in contact. One of those things are the things that we talked about last week when we are talking about some of the math from both. So if we share the same base, we can sit there and use the fact that that base is being shared between the two. So let's say, for instance, we have a number that's like four times 10 to the eight. And we're going to be dividing that by two times 10 to the seven. Okay. So if we do this, that base is based upon a factor of 10. So we know that we can sit there and go 10 to the eight minus seven. Right? And then that's gonna give us that factor. And then we can also go over here and divide these numbers by each other. What is four divided by two? Okay. So then in other words, this is just going to equal two times 10 to the one. You, you can just cover this thing. It would be the same thing. Or you could just say 20 if you didn't have to write it in scientific notation. Okay. Questions? Have a look. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. There's a question on the other side. Let's see what they said. Uh, 
No question. Okay. So let's see if we can make it a little more challenging. So if I have 6.03 times 10 to the 15, and we're going to divide that by 3 times 10 to the So, since these guys are both the same base, what am I going to do with those? Okay, so I'm going to go 15 minus 19. So the number that's always at the bottom is going to be the one that's going to be the subtraction, right? Okay. And then we know that we can just divide this by 6.03 by 3. Two point zero one. Okay. So then we end up with got to excuse my third grade handwriting. 0 0.01 times 10 okay you always have to put the fraction like 2.01 over 1 or it's a minus just like whatever 2.01 after you divide so after you divide like the 6.03 to 3 you have to put like 2.01 over 1 no okay so the key is just that you do want it just to get inside notation okay. you don't want to get the fraction right? okay and so this is just like as i said a quick way of doing it you see that we can just simply divide that we can just divide it on a calculator and get that value and then you're just going to be multiplying it by 10. or you can put it all into a calculator right and i'll show you how to do that here in a minute. Okay. okay okay questions pretty simple right so scientific notation not too hard now again scientific notation keeps us from having to write down all those zeros Let's see. Okay, so if we have three million six hundred and seventy two thousand one hundred and ninety nine, we want to write that into scientific notation. How do I go about doing that? Okay. So we're going to move the decimal six places. One, two, three, four, five, six. So then our answer is going to be 3.672199 times 10 to the 26. What about the one at the bottom?
We're going to move it to the four. So then that's one, two, three. Okay, 4.61 times 10 to the negative. Okay, questions? No questions? Questions on the other side. So if you guys have questions, just enter them in the chat box or ask the question. Questions. I like it when there's no questions. Okay, so sometimes we're going to have to convert scientific notation back into decimal form. I know it's painful sometimes. We have 11 zeros here. So, how are we going to do this? Okay. So you're saying that we're going to be moving it in this direction here? Yes. And so that's one. And then we're going to add one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten zeros, right? Yes. So so that one counts as that one that we're taking from 11. And then we have a whole bunch more zeros. So. And again, that negative reminds us that it's going to be a small number, right? Or it's going to be a number that's going to be less than one. And then in this case, what am I going to do? Second one. Convert 5.16 times 10 to the fourth to decimal form. Hey, don't everybody yell at me once. <laughs> Any suggestions? Do, you, do I need to volunteer people? I'm going to move your four spaces to the right. I guess I just have to look real hard, right? <laughs> okay, so then that's one, two, three, four. I know it's 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 late and we all want to, we're already drinking a coffee. Yes, I'm right here with you. I'm But it goes a lot smoother if we can work together as a team. My voice gets tired after a while. Okay, piece of cake, strawberry with uh, chocolate ice. Did I tell you it's my birthday next week? That's right, the fourteenth, right? Okay. Not next week, two weeks. I'm you can give me extra. You know, I have I have a birthday until my birthday, right? Every week is my birthday until my birthday. So. Okay. Yep. That's my dad's birthday too. Okay. Let's see. Now, you got to be able to use a calculator, right? And uh, especially when using exponents. Now, the key to using a calculator and exponents is that you got to know certain keys, right? So, depending on the calculator that you guys have, you're going to either be using EE. So if you guys, how many of you guys have an iPhone available? Pull out your iPhone. Your iPhone has a calculator on it, a scientific calculator. Okay. So if you have your iPhone, you want to turn it to the side so that it's uh, in scientific mode. Okay. And then if you have it to the side, there is a key that says E, capital E, capital E, okay? 
Do you guys all see your capital E, capital E? So that's going to represent 10 to the, you know, power. Okay. So this guy, that EE, is going to represent 10 to the whatever power we're talking about. Okay. So if I have 23, I mean, 2.3, 1 times 10 to the 19th power. The way that I would enter it into the calculator or into my iPhone calculator is 2.31. And then I'm going to hit that DE button. Don't worry about it. If you have an Android, I'll talk to you about that here in a minute. You're going to hit that DE button. And then you're going to put 19. Okay, so if you guys do that, what happens? Okay. So in this case, that E19 represents 10 to the 19th power. Okay. So anybody have an Android? Anybody have an Android? No Androids? Hold on, let me go. You have an Android? Yeah. Where are you? Got two more obliged ones. So, so if you're using an Android, what you're going to have to do is you're going to type in 2.3, 1, and then you're going to type in, is it time? Just times 10, and then you're going to use the arrow your arrows to put it up. So it will be an up arrow. You're going to use that a little arrow to put it up. And then you're going to type in the number. So you're going to use it. So let me correct that. Hold on. So I put two point three one, and then I'll go times. 10, and then if you use 10 squared, it gives you that option, and then you go back and make the correction. 
So you're going to correct this squared and then you put in the value that you want. So we're going to change that. You're going to use the, the uh, delete. Yeah, just the backspace. The backspace. You're going to use the backspace value and then put 19 in this place. Okay. For Androids. So again, it's going to be 10, and it says 10 to it's x squared, right? That value, x squared. So you're going to use 10, and then you use the x squared button. You're going to replace that x the squared by hitting backspace. So you're going to backspace and then put the value in. Okay. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure you could download an app for a scientific calculator and give you a bunch of Okay. So let's see if, if you guys can do me a favor and uh, put in uh, 2.31 times 10 to the 19. And then what we're going to do, we're going to divide it by, and this is going to be important. You're going to use parentheses. So you're going to go parentheses, 1.21 times 10 to the, well, Okay. Now, remember, you're going to be using these keys, or you're going to be using the uh, the squared value or the squared x value to sit there and do it. Okay. So type it in the way that that would be good. Is the library you guys can check one out at the library for the scientific calculator? Did you guys? So you're gonna go pick it up for me? Yeah. Okay, so if you're using your, if you're using an iPhone, you're going to enter 2.31 EP19. Then you're going to hit division. Usually just a slash or a division. And then we're going to hit parentheses 1.21 EE 12 close parentheses. Okay. Okay, are you guys? So you guys, I recommend that you guys get a scientific calculator. That'll be the best thing to do. Uh, they, 
You can actually, I apparently, at Harnell, you can get them for $14 at the bookstore. You can get them at the uh, 99 cent store for five bucks. Okay, we'll see what we'll see. So, did you guys get nineteen zero nine zero? Nine zero nine point one. What you guys got? They did. I had I didn't put the decimal. You added decimal, like I got that, but I also had the decimal. You had more decimals? Well no, I had the same I had the same answer, but I have decimals to add to it. I said decimal zero nine zero nine zero nine. Yeah. Yeah, it's just rounded. Okay. After a while. Like, well, I guess if you do the length of it, yes, you'll see all of those zero nines are like, okay, yeah. You have to add that right now. It depends on the question. Right? Got it. So it will be dependent on the question that you have. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> questions? You're still, you're still working it out? Do we have to put the parentheses on, uh, like how you have them? In order for it to be <laughs> okay. And um, we'll get in the habit for like those at Harnell. We'll talk about it a little bit in lab so you guys will get used to it. So bring a calculator. Okay. So when you guys are talking about anything in chemistry or any type of science, you're always going to make reference to quantity. Now, quantity is always going to be a value and units, right? So you don't just say, I have eight, right? Because what is eight? Eight of what? Eight husbands, eight wives, eight kids, eight daddies. Eight baby daddies. You know, what is eight? We don't know what eight is, right? So you always want to let me know what you guys are talking about, right? You guys, a lot of times I'll get a message. Dr. Henry, I got 12. 12 of what? So you want to always put the units there. Units are very important, okay? So express 50 minutes and seconds. So the way that I always do this, and I talk to you guys about it, I it's Dr. Henry's dating style, right? I did tell you about my dating style, right? Good. Yes, out with the old, in with the new. So the old in this case is going to be minutes. So we're going to start off with what's given first. So we have 50 minutes. And we use MIN for the abbreviation for minutes. And you guys know, or you should know, how many minutes, I mean, how many seconds are in a minute? So we know that there are 60 seconds. The abbreviation for seconds is just an S. It's going to equal one minute. Okay. So minutes is going to be what we're starting off with. That's the girl that I'm currently seeing. Okay, now I want to get up with seconds. Seconds is hotter, he's richer. You know, so 
In that case, I'm going to make seconds a priority. So seconds is going to go on top. So I'm going to put my 60 seconds on top. And I'm going to put that one minute on the bottom. And as we discuss, minute over minute is going to cancel out. Kind of like if we had x over x. Doesn't that cancel out? Yeah, no. Okay. Or if I have 25 over 25. Doesn't that cancel out? Okay. So then the units that we're going to be left with is just seconds. Okay. Questions? No questions. How did I find 3,000? 3,000 seconds. How did I find 3,000 seconds? Fifty times sixty. So this line, the line here, represents multiplication. This line here represents division. Okay. Right. So we're just going to multiply. Okay. Any questions? <laughs> Okay, no questions? Okay. So now if I have to think about, let's say, converting multiple times, sometimes it's easier rather than us to just try to figure out a whole brand new conversion factor is to break it up into segments. Okay? So let's say, for instance, um, I had Fifty-five decades. And I want to know how many hours are in fifty-five decades. Okay, so in this case, what are some of the conversions that could be helpful for us? Oh, we're calling back. Decades to years. So decades to years. So how many decades are in a year? How many years are in a decade? Okay, so we know that there are 10 years. going to equal one decade. Okay, what else could be important for this? Days. days in a year. So how many days are in a year? We have 65 days. What else could be important? Hours in a day. Hours in a day. How many, how many hours are in a day? 24. <laughs> okay, so now what is my given? 55 decades is my given. And what is my goal? Where, where am I taking this? We're taking it to hours. Okay. So we got a little ways to go because we have decades. 
So we're going to start off with decades to years. So who's going on top? Who's going on bottom? Who's the new one? Who's the old? So we have one decade on the bottom. And on top. Okay, so then now we've got rid of decades. Okay, who's next? One year where? On the bottom. One year at the bottom. How do you know where to put, when, how do you know when to go top or bottom? Because you want to try to get rid of it, right? So, oh, okay. So you want to cross to, it out. That's right. You want to cross it out. So we have one year on the bottom. So then what's going to be on top? 365 days. Okay. And the last one. The bottom, four hours on top. Okay. So what I recommend that you guys do is I always take that top and I multiply it straight across. So 55 times 10 times 365 times 24. And then if there are things on the bottom, then I divide it each one by what's on the bottom each time. And if you guys can do me a favor and write it in scientific notation. They want to share their answer. Yes. Okay, so four point. Eight, eight, five, six, six. Okay. Questions, concerns, cash, Kool-Aid. Okay. okay, ready for the next one? Ready to move on? Okay, so the oldest horse racing track in the United States is the eight furlong Pleasantation Fairground Racing Track in California. What is the length of the track in rods? So, where are we going to start at? Any volunteers? I give it. What's my give it? That there's eight rods or eight furlongs? Eight. eight furlongs. That's our given. That's right. So, we know that the eight furlongs is going to be our given. So, that's where we're going to start at. Okay, so we're going to start with eight furlongs. Okay, so I want to get my answer in what? So who's going on top? Who's going on bottom? Okay, so I'm going to have 
My conversion says I have one rod, one rod. And then how many furlongs on the bottom? So we do that math. What do you guys end up with? Okay. Questions? Concerns? Cash? Too late? Okay. So let's actually do a homework problem. One from, we'll do one from uh, Arnell and then one from the guys. So one second. <laughs> okay, so for our now, this is question sixty three. Is that better? Okay, so it says convert 46.0 millimeters into inches. Okay, so what are some of the conversion factors that we know about inches and the metric system? Inches to centimeters. So how many inches are in the centimeter? So how many of you guys have your periodic table packet? At home, how many of you guys have your periodic table packet? There we go. Is it, you said 2.2 centimeters or 2.54? 2.54. four. 2.54 centimeters equals one inch. And we could say one, one centimeter equals, you said 3 point, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.34. Okay. So we can use either of these conversion factors. It's probably easier, easiest to use the ones that are shown to us at the bottom. So.
get it. Okay, so in your homework assignment, it's a drag and drop type of situation. So we're just going to drag our starting. This is our starting point. Okay, so we're starting with millimeters, but we know centimeters. What is the conversion between millimeters and centimeters? How many millimeters will equal one centimeter? Okay, we have 10 millimeters <laughs> equals one centimeter. Thank you, Yolanda. And Okay, so we want to get rid of millimeters, right? So if I want to get rid of millimeters, how am I going to do that? Is millimeters going to be on top or on the bottom? And then we know that we're going to have our one centimeter on top. But that doesn't get us to interest, so we're going to add another factor. So we're going to click this button here. Now I have centimeters. So I want to get rid of centimeters. How am I going to do that? Centimeters are going to go on the bottom. And then what's going to go on top? Okay, and our answer is going to be, we're going to be left with inches. So if we multiply across, so we have 46 times 1 times 1, which is just 46. And then we're going to divide it by 10. And then we're going to divide it by 2.5. What did you guys get? Yeah, that's the so what is it a choice? 1.81? 1.81. So when we're doing conversions, right? And I'm gonna say this again when we get back to sick figs. When we're doing conversions, so your conversions aren't gonna affect the number of many figures. So in this case, we have 46.0, right? The fact that we put that 0, 0.0, that means that that zero is going to be significant. We take the time to put the decimal point or zero, or otherwise we just write 46. Okay. So that means that there are three significant figures. Right. So my answer should end up with three significant figures. So we're going to round it so that our answer ends up with three significant figures. And if I remember correctly. The answer that you guys ended up with was 1.1102362. One, one, right? So we go three. So it'll be 1.81. Let me write it on here. Yes. See? 1.81. 102362. One, so what we're going to do is we're going to count one, two, three. So this number here, we use to decide if we're going to round up or leave, it alone, leave this number alone. Okay. Are we going to round it up, round that number up, or are we going to leave it alone? You said round up? We're going to leave it. Okay. So we're going to leave it because it's less than five, right? So if it's equal to five exactly, meaning that this has a five and there's no, nothing behind it, or if it's less than five, we're going to leave this number alone. So then we're just going to have 1.81. That's going to be your answer. 
Okay. Questions? Concerns? Cash? Okay. Okay. Yes. Um, I don't really know how to explain it. I'm confused on like how you know what conversion to look for. Okay. Uh, like how it went from like how it went from centimeters to inches, centimeters to inches, and then millimeters to centimeters. Okay. So we're we're starting out from millimeters, right? Yeah. So you always start up with what you're given, right? And really conversions is about what you know, right? So the things that we know was, we can look on that sheet that I gave you, we know what centimeters to inches are, right? Because it's easy, easily found on that sheet. It's a lot harder for us to find millimeters to inches, although it is on that sheet, right? But if it wasn't, it would be a lot harder for us to find. It. So there's certain things that we kind of keep in our mind, right? So I always know that if I'm working with one inch, that's gonna be 2.54 centimeters. I have it memorized, right? Because I use it so frequently. Um, and so you use your knowledge base. And so that's the first thing that I always do is try to figure out it, what is it that I know. If I'm working with uh, distance, I try to remember the distances that I'm talking about. Millimeters is distance, inches is distance, right? So you just try to figure out what it is that you currently know. And if you don't know, then you look up on sheet right and then you start using that okay and so then you kind of use this as tools to sit there and get there we could have went straight from uh millimeters to inches if we knew the conversion right but you know i don't remember the records but i remember centimeters i remember that middle point and so i said okay i have my middle point but i also remember that a millimeter right 10 millimeters is going to equal to one centimeter and I always keep that in the back of my mind. So I just try to remember what I know. Okay. Okay. So I always start with what you know. And then if it doesn't work, then you use Google, right? Or you use the sheet. Okay. okay. So that's actually a good question because a lot of times you're like, is there a rule that I have to do this? No, there isn't, right? And that's kind of the cool thing about science is that you can start from any point. As long as you get to the answer and it's clear how you got there, it's okay. Okay, questions, no questions? Okay, so then since you guys had the opportunity to look at your homework for a, a little bit longer, is there a question that you guys want help with? Okay, yes. 12. Question 12. And what I'll try to do in the future, this homework is a little bit different, but in the future, I'll try to uh, overlap the homework so that they're both the same type of homework so you guys can also interact with each other at right now. That'd be good. So I'm talking over there too. So. Okay, so let me get. Question 12. Yes. So It says, consider the following image of two burettes, the initial and the final reading, okay? So initially, the burette reading is, okay, so you guys need to understand what a burette is. So let's start off with that, okay? All 
Okay, so this is what a burette is. It's basically a measurement device. And so it actually, you put liquid in there and you use this, this is called a stopcock. You use the stopcock to sit there and open up to drop drops into a solution. Okay, so you're gonna have a starting value of a certain point and you're gonna have an ending value of another point. Okay, so your initial is gonna be your starting value. Your ending value is gonna be there. Let me pull it up and off. Old age. Let me get my walker here. How many do you have left? How many burettes? That's solid. Well, we got four ish. <laughs> almost, almost less. Okay, so this is a burette. Okay, so I'm going to pass it around so you guys can actually see it. And then you can, can see it here that you can actually play with it. Okay, we use it often with uh, when we're doing acid-based chemistry. Uh, we what we call titrate an acid. Okay, so now, now that you kind of see what a burette looks like, so the initial reading of the burette is when you're reading a graduated cylinder, a burette, any type of measuring device, you always look at the meniscus. Where is the meniscus in this case located at? Below the hip. Okay, so we know that this guy is, this is 11, this is 12. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right? So we would say that this is, it looks like it's just below. Eleven point one two. So it's somewhere between eleven point two to eleven point three. But it's closer to that 11.2, right? So we write down the value for our initial value being 11.2. Okay. Just to be kind of guesstimate, right? So then if we look at our ending value, it went down to. So a little bit below, a little bit below 28, right? So then it's between 28, 29, but really close to 28, right? So then we'd say 28 point, say zero one, okay? So this is gonna be our final value. So we're gonna put, this is F final, I mean BF, uh, B, F, and B, I. I representing initial, F representing final, B representing the volume. And we know that this is in milliliters. So how do you think we calculate that volume that's being delivered into our tube? By subtracting, right? So we're gonna subtract our final volume minus our initial volume. So in this case, we have 11.21 minus, oops, sorry, 28.01 minus 11.21.
meet up with 16. So if we enter that in there. Questions? Questions? Pretty simple. Not too bad. I don't know. I feel like we kind of had a guess on the like we were reading. Yeah. But it still gave us the point. Said yeah, correct. it will because it's a guess. Because if you read what they say down here, it says it's around eleven point two three. That's, I mean, that's all we're doing. We're all taking a guess. So you've got to get used to be confident in yourself, in your, your guess, right? And don't let it, you're getting the hives already. Relax, it's okay. I can see them from here, you know. Just relax. Don't get worked up and you have to feel confident. It's your reading, right? And so it's your reading. Their reading is just as good as your reading, right? Your eyes is just as good as their eyes. Close enough. Yeah, that's why you got the point, right? If it was way off, if you said 37, right, for your answer, then that would be way off, right? Yeah. So, but you're in the ballpark range. That answer is not necessarily right, because I can guarantee you, if we actually had gradients, it probably wouldn't be two to three, right? They're just guessing from their eye. Right. Okay? That's good to know. I would have been stressed at home pressure. There's no need to be stressed. And again, don't be stressed about it, you know? Just kind of like, trust yourself, Okay. Okay, on the other end, so could you go over how to find coefficients? Okay, so you guys are making reference to coefficients for chemical equations. Yes. Okay, so because you both have chemical equations, they haven't even talked about chemical equations yet. Do you guys want to talk about chemical equations? You guys are getting itchy about it, right? So let me go ahead and give you guys the quick rundown of chemical equations. I'm going to go to the board to do that. It makes it a lot easier for us to see. Okay. And I'm going to show you how to, how to determine the coefficients. Okay. Are you guys ready? Let's see. Uh, stop sharing here. And you guys will be able to see at home too. Give me one second. Let me get myself here. <laughs> okay, so we'll start off with equations, uh, chemical equations that you guys should all be familiar with if you've taken biology. How many of you guys have taken biology? Hey, Marnell, how many of you guys have taken biology? Let's see how many out there, but okay. <laughs> so, have you guys heard of? Okay, I asked one. Okay, so we're doing great here. But have you guys, well, well okay, we'll do something that we know that everybody does, right? How many of you guys breathe? Raise your hand. Arnell, how many of you guys breathe? Raise your hand. Okay, good. Good. We got one person there that breathes as well, too. Okay, so we're, we're doing great. Actually, I have 17 of us. Okay. Now, now that we know that you guys all breathe, do you know why you breathe? We can stay alive. So we can stay alive. Yes. Yes, we do it to stay alive. But do you know at, on a molecular level why you breathe? Or a chemical level? Just like well, that's just part of it, but why? Why do you need to do that? 
But why do you breathe? Cellular respiration. Cellular respiration. Yes, cellular respiration. Okay, so what happens in the case of cellular respiration? That's a good question. I breathe in carbon. Are you sure? Okay, we breathe in oxygen. Okay, so the chemical symbol for oxygen is O2. Okay, because oxygen is one of these seven that are called diatomic atoms. So we always write it as when we talk about oxygen, the gas, and we're talking about oxygen all by itself, it's always written as O2. Okay, now. Why do we need to breathe in oxygen? Uh, okay, cells need oxygen to do what? <laughs> what was that? You said cellular. Okay, so, so you guys are going back in circles now, right? So we're back at the starting point. How many guys like candy? What is the best thing about candy? To break down sugar. That's the sugar, there we go. Okay, is somebody giving you the answers over there? No, I don't think so. Oh, okay. so. So the type of sugar that our body likes is called glucose. You guys heard of glucose? Yes. Chemical formula for glucose is C6 H12 O6. Okay. Now, when we're talking about chemical compounds, a compound, right? You'll notice this here represents the number of carbons that we have in this chemical compound. You notice that it's written as a subscript. That means it's always going to be a little bit lower than the chemical symbol. You'll notice the chemical symbol for carbon is a capital C. You guys see that? Okay. Chemical symbol for hydrogen is a capital H. Chemical symbol for oxygen is a capital O. We want to write it as capitals. You don't want to write it as. Okay. You don't want to do that. You don't want to write it as this. Or this, because this means something entirely different. So we want to write it as capital C, capital H. This means we have six carbons. This means we have 12 hydrogens. We have six oxygens. Okay? So these are called your subscripts. The subscripts are used to define your compound. Okay. Is with me so far? Subscripts are used to define the compound. I'll tell you what that compound is. Okay. Kind of like water. You guys, water, you know, come some of the water? H2O. H2O. Okay. So, and when we have this, you guys have told me about cellular respiration. Now let's think about cellular respiration. We know that cellular respiration is used to sit there and break down basically our food. How many guys eat during Thanksgiving? You guys eat a lot? Yes. Okay, so when you guys eat during Thanksgiving, so you probably had this moment, tell me. So I could be wrong, that could be not be everybody. But you sit there, you eat, you go. Right? You really, you really get down and dirty with food, right? Okay. Now, when you do that, get that really deep breath to suck in oxygen, right? Okay, now that oxygen is going to be helping breaking down that food. And then, of course, and then you start breathing out. What are you breathing out? Carbon dioxide. We're breathing out carbon dioxide. What is the chemical symbol for carbon dioxide? CO2. Okay. I'll tell you what the little letter is. Okay. So 
Okay. Now you'll notice after a while, you probably have a little tinkle, right? So what do you think it would produce in the case of you have a little tinkle? What was that? Oh, you said you can't. <laughs> what is the most what is the most abundant thing in your urine? Water. Okay. <laughs> And the thing that we really want to get out of this, okay, the thing that we want to get out of this is, is ATP, which is cellular energy, and heat. You notice that you'll have the meat sweats. You guys, the meat sweats. You get the meat sweats after eating all that turkey and ham? I get the meat sweats. I'm like, my head is all sweating and everything, you know? So those are the two things that you're getting out of it. Now, this here, cellular respiration. This is about life, right? Okay. It's also what we call a combustion reaction. In a combustion reaction, you use oxygen to break down organic material to produce carbon dioxide and water. Okay, so when we're breaking down organic material with oxygen, we're getting carbon dioxide and water. So this is also a combustion reaction. There's a lot of energy that are stored up in the bonds of that sugar, that potential energy. Okay, so this is our chemical equation. However, this chemical equation is not balanced. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to balance. Don't overthink it. Suggest just keep it simple. We're going to try to keep it simple. Okay, so this here is called the reactant side of the equation. So these are your reactants. So reactants are what's reacting, right? This here is called the product side. This arrow points to what's being made, right? Your products are being made. This arrow is called the yield. So we say reactants yield products, or we can say reactants make products. Okay. So carbon dioxide plus glucose makes, I'm sorry, oxygen plus uh, glucose makes carbon dioxide and water. Okay. Okay, so so say um, the first reactant when it's glucose, so carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, right? Glucose, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen don't necessarily create glucose, but carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen are components. That makes sense? Yes. Okay. But you can make glucose with the right type of carbon and oxygen. We'll talk about that here in a minute because plants do the reverse of this, right? So they actually use carbon dioxide, water to make glucose and oxygen. What's called? What was that? Photosynthesis. Okay. So that's the reverse of this reaction. Okay. So in that case, it's used carbon dioxide, right? Not just carbon, not just hydrogen, but carbon dioxide and water. Does that make sense? 
Okay, so the first thing to balance the chemical equation is to try to determine of how many of each of the atoms that you have on both sides. Okay, so one thing that you have to know is the law of conservation. Law of conservation says that what you put in, you must get out. Okay, so we need to figure out a way of putting in the right amount of stuff so that we end up with the right amount of stuff. Does that make sense? So the law of conservation says what again? Okay. So what you put in, you've got to get out. Okay. So let's go ahead and work through this. Okay. Do you mind if I erase this part of the subscript and all that stuff? Because that part I like names, but let's give a little more space. Okay. So the first thing that I always do is write down what are the elements that I'm working with. So what elements do you guys see? Okay. Yeah, lost. So I'm going to write a note. Okay, what else? We have carbon. And we have hydrogen. Okay. Oxygen, carbon, or hydrogen? Or oxygen. Carbon, oxygen, hydrogen. Now I write it in the center so that I don't have to write it twice. But if you want to write it twice, you can write it over here and you can write it over there. It's whatever code you write. Okay. So the first, the next thing I'm going to do is count how many I have on each side of the reaction. So on my reactant side, so I'm going to say on this side here, it's up. I'm going to count the number of oxygens. Okay. So, how many oxygens do I have? How many are here? I have six. And how many are here? Okay. Six plus two? Eight. Okay. Then I'm going to come over to my product side, that side over here. Okay. So, on my product side, how many oxygens do I have? Two. That's all. Three. I have a total of three. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, same thing with my carbons. On my reactant side, six. On my product side, one. How about the hydrogens? On my reactant side, 12. On my product side, two. Okay, so I said the law of conservation says what goes in has to come out, right? So the next thing that we need to look at are these balanced. Did what went in come out? No. Okay, so this means that we have to start using what we call the coefficients. Okay, coefficients are going to be the numbers that we put in front of our compounds. We use the coefficients to balance the chemical equation. Okay. Okay, Delilah. We'll see you. Well, you'll see us in the morning. Okay. So the best way of doing it is finding the elements that are not necessarily fine with a whole bunch of elements that you can balance off easily, right? If we take a look at it here, so we know that we have 12 hydrogens over here, and we have two hydrogens over here, right? Okay. So, 
So 12 and 2, right? So how can I make it so that there's 12 on the other side? What can I multiply 2 by? 6. Okay, I can multiply by 6, right? So there's two hydrogens here. So if I put 6 in front of here, that'll give me a total of 12 hydrogens. So I cross this out, and now I have 12. Okay. Now, let's look at my carbons. I have six over here, and I have one here. So what can I multiply this by so that it doesn't six? I multiply it by six. I'll put a six right here. Okay. So then now we have to recalculate our oxygen because this number, the coefficient, this number here, it pertains to both of those elements in the compound. Okay, so six times two, so that's 12. Plus there's oxygen over here, okay? And then that's six times one, six. So that's the total of how many? 12, 18, okay? So now we have 18. Okay, so my carbons are balanced out, my hydrogens are balanced out, but my oxygens are not. Okay, you guys see that? Can you, uh, one more time, I got 18, 12 plus six. Yes, so six, six times two. So that's gonna be 12. And then we have six times one. Okay, so if we look over here, we know we have six oxygens here. We have six oxygens here, right? We already know that we have this balanced out. My carbons and my hydrogens are balanced out. So I know I don't want to mess with that, right? It's good because this part is good. Okay. But I know I need to get 18 oxygens. So is there something I can multiply this guy by to make it so that it gives me, I have six here, so I'm going to say 18 minus six is going to be what? 12. So, so that I end up with 12. So what can I put in front of here to give me 12? I can put a six, okay? So let's check it out now. We have six times two, 12 plus six, so that's 18. So that gives me 18. So now I have 18, 18, six, six, 12, 12. And so this here is understood if we don't put anything there to be a one. Okay, so understood. Okay, if you don't put anything there, it's understood to be a one. Okay. How you doing over there? That's how that looks. Some of you guys. How did you, how did you figure out eighteen? Okay. So I knew that these guys were already good. These two. So I know I don't want to put any number in front of them. Okay. So I know that means that I have six that are going to be contributing from here. Okay. So. 
If I have six that are going to be contributing from here, so I know that on the other side, I have 18, right? So 18 minus six is 12. That means I know I have to get 12. So I know this guy's a two, right? Since this here is a two, that means that what times two is going to equal 12? That's six. Okay. So that is six. So, how do you feel it? Ready for drinks? Excellent. So, we're going to do another one. So, we're going to do, um, let's do, let's do, uh, let's do, Why do they have the G and the S? Good question. I forgot to tell you. Yes. Yes. So when you see a G, G equals gas, S is solid. That's what L is. And then sometimes you'll see a cube. That means in water or a cube. Okay. Okay. Remember, it's a combustion reaction. <laughs> it's going to be gas. It's not really going to be. It's going to be taken from the body to go down. But you know, conditions are not this. Okay, so now we're going to be making what was that? Oh, I have good comments. Oh, zero to 100 real quick. Okay, we'll go. Don't worry about it. We're going to go a little slower this time. Okay, so now we're making we're making alcohol, right? So we're making alcohol. We're going to turn up. Okay, but I told you guys that you needed a drink, right? Okay, so when we make alcohol, we have we're gonna have carbon dioxide and ethanol. So carbon dioxide is CO. We're gonna use glucose. And we're going to get C2H5. And when we work with organic chemistry, um, organic compounds, we will often write the compound so that it's easy for us to remember how it looked, right? So that's the reason why we write this as C2H5OH, even though we could have just put the H over here with the other H's. So, and this is called ethanol, or we like to think of it as vodka, okay, or drinking alcohol, okay. So, we're going to go through the same process. Let's just do a little more trick here, okay. So, the first thing I did was to do what? What was the first thing I did after we had the chemicals all real? Label which ones I had. So, what drinks do we have? Okay, so we have a carbon, we have hydrogen, and we have oxygen. Okay, okay, Arnell, on my reactant side, which side is my reactant side? Is it the side with the glucose? Or the side with the carbon dioxide and ethanol. Oh, let me. Glucose, good job. Okay. The plus always means it's like this and this. So the plus is like and, right? 
just like math, right? This and this. This and this equals, you know, okay. Okay, so on my reactant side, how many carbons do I have, Cardell? One person. Okay, I have six. Okay, Kalinga. How many hydrogens do I have on the Six. Well, oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, now either side, how many oxygens do I have on the reactive side? Okay. Now on the product side, yes. Why is there a parenthesis in the body? It's it's the S for solid. Oh, it's my fault. My fault. My fault. Messing with my third grade handwriting. My fault. My fault. Oh, we cry. Okay, that's an S. <laughs> my fault. Okay. <laughs> okay, so now on our product side. Now, which side is the product side? Okay, the side with the ethanol and the carbon dioxide. Okay, how many carbons do I have? Three. Because I have one here. Okay, I have one there. One here, right? Okay, and then I have two here. Okay, so that's how I got my three. Okay, how many hydrogens do I have? Six. Six. Because I have five and that one, five plus one, six. six. Okay, and then how many oxygens do I have? I have three. Okay. Okay. So, as I said, I always start off with the one that seems the easiest. So, I have one, I have hydrogens here in this one compound, and I have hydrogens only over here in the uh, ethanol. So, I have hydrogens in glucose, and I have hydrogens in ethanol. If I start off with that, that would probably be the best thing to do. Rather than trying to start off with the carbon, because carbon is located both in carbon dioxide and ethanol. So that's going to take a little guessing. It's better for us not to guess. We want to be confident, right? Okay? So if I take a look at my hydrogen, what can I do to balance that out? What can I put in front of? Since only ethanol has hydrogen and altogether it has six, what can I put in front of it so that it would be 12? Two. I'll just put two in front. So then that gives me well, six times two is 12. Okay, so now how many oxygens do I have? I have two oh, wait. times one. So two times one is what? Plus two, right? So there's two here. So that's a total of. Is that working for us? No. How many carbons do I have? Two times two. So I have a total of five. Okay, but I need six. Okay. So if this guy is good for the hydrogens, the ethanol is good for the hydrogens, they cover all of our hydrogens. So we know we're probably not going to do anything with it, right? Nothing else. So what can I put in front of my carbon dioxide so that I can end up with a total of six carbons? Okay. We'll try it for just for the kicks and giggles, right? Let's see if it works out. So if I put a four here, let's do the math. 
So I have four. Four times one. Is four. Plus two times two. Four. Does that equal six? No. Okay, so I can't be a four. Two. So if I use a two, okay? So if I use a two, two times one, two times two, and two times one is two, and then two times two. Okay, so then that's a total of, okay? So that would be six, that would work out for us. Okay, now we have to look at the oxygens. So I have two times two, Okay, so that's four. And then two times one. Two, so that's a total of six. Those are hard. Ones. Don't worry about it. You guys are I'm giving you guys hard ones first. Then we'll work down to the easy ones. Real quick, how'd you get six from? From what? Uh, from uh, oxygen. Oxygen. Okay. So we have two times two. So that's four. And we have two times one. That's two. So four plus two. Okay. Want to try one more? Sure. Okay. Let's go with another combustion reaction. So we're going to keep carbon dioxide. Okay. Okay, first step. Arnell, tell me what's the first thing that I need to do. What would be my first step? Mark, which one are the reactants and which ones are the products? Okay. So we need to figure out what, what elements we have. Is that what you make reference to? Or just determine which our products are, what elements we have. Okay. So what are the elements that we have in this compound? Or in this reaction, sorry. They were popping up. You guys told me, I, I'm sure it went up there, but it popped up so fast. So I'm going to assume that you said carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Okay. So since we have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, on my reactant side, how many carbons do we have? Let's go, Kalinga. One. How many hydrogens do we have? Arnell. How many oxygens do we have? Arnell. Okay, two. Okay, 
On my product side, how many carbons do we have? Kalinga, one. How many hydrogens do we have? Kalinga, two. How many oxygens do we have? Parnell. Okay, so we have three oxygen. Okay, so is it balanced? No, okay, so where should I start at? Oxygen. So remember, there's two oxygens over here. That's gonna be a little harder for me to start with. So, so we want to start with the hydrogen because there's only one source or one place the hydrogen went, right? Okay, so we have two. How can I make it four? So I put it two in front. So two times two is four. Okay. Now, how many oxygens do I have? So I have how many here? With the carbon dioxide, I have two for carbon dioxide. And then for the water, how many do I have? Two. I have two. Okay, so that's a total of four. Okay, but I started off with two. So what can I do to fix that? I can go back to the reactive side. So if I go back to the reactive side, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna put a two in front of here. So then I have four. four. Is it balanced? Yes. Okay. You escaped? Not too bad. One for the road. Okay. Not really for the road, it's for a break. So we're gonna take a little break. Okay. And Okay, so let's do. Who's the one you want to go to? It's really hard. Really hard? Okay. You just need to say a really hard one and leave. <laughs> This is a new one, right? It's a new one. Okay. This is a bad thing. This is bad thing. Not really hard, but it's a little, it'll, it'll, it'll keep us on our toes. Okay. Step number one, Kalinga. Write down my elements. I already have them written down. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Okay. Step number two. Uh, mark down how much is this. Okay, so let's figure out how much we have on our reactive side. Parnell, how many carbons? How many hydrogens? Okay, that's right. We have six. We have two carbons, six hydrogens, and Harnell. How many oxygens? So I see two, two, and a three on our reactor side. That's fine too. Okay. And 
that correction. Okay, now on the product side, everybody, how many carbon? How many hydrogens? Two. 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 How many oxygens? Now, some of you guys, now for everybody, I'm getting two voices. Okay? So there's there's more than two people in here, isn't there? So I have how many? How many here? Two. Mary, how many you see here? I have two. And how many here? One, okay, so one plus two, three, three. Okay, so is it balanced? No. Okay, so it's not balanced. Where am I gonna start at? The hydrogen. Okay, we can start with the hydrogen. Okay, so if we start with the hydrogen, what can I put in front of water so that I end up with a total of six? Three. Okay, so we have Probably doesn't matter for some. <laughs> so I put a three there, right? So three times two is going to be a six. So we have six there. Cross this out, we got six. How many oxygens do we have now? Five. Okay, so we also have three times one. Oh. So three times one is three. Plus two, so you're right. Oh, five. Okay, so we have a total of five. Okay, is that balanced? No. Okay, what do I need to do next? Is my carbon balanced? So maybe we should start with balancing the carbon because there's only there's one source for carbon on both sides, right? So, how can I balance out my carbons? Put a two. Okay, so let's go ahead and put a two. So that means now we have two carbons. How many oxygens? Uh, it's going to be four. Okay, so we have four plus, how many do we have over here? Three. Four plus three, seven. So now we have seven oxygens. Is that balanced? No? Okay, so this brings us to another point, okay? We have our hydrogens, our carbons, our hydrogens perfectly balanced, right? And this is our only source of oxygen here. So somehow it needs to have to equal seven. So what can I put in front of it so that it would equal seven? Five fractions. What can I put in front of it so that it can equal seven? Three point five. Somebody said three point five, or we could say seven halves. Because seven over two times two doesn't that equal seven? Okay. Now this is a dilemma in chemistry. Why do you guys think it's a, a dilemma in chemistry? Because okay. having seven halves is weird. Okay. Yes. So having a half of a molecule is a weird thing to happen. Because what happens if I decide to cut one of you guys in half? I cut you in half. What's going to happen? You're going to be okay? No, you're not going to be okay, right? So that's the same thing with that compound. It's not going to be okay. You can't have seven half when you're looking at a a uh, atomic level or a uh, molecular level, okay? So what we can do is we can multiply that whole reaction by what to get rid of that half? Two. So then that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna multiply everything by two. So put it in brackets, we'll go two times. Think that they were kind of Okay, so at the end, we end up with 
two times, this is understood to be what? Okay, so we have two D two. Okay, and then two times seven halves, seven. And then two times two. Plus so two times three, six. That would be our answer. Okay. Pray don't this. So when we get to that fraction, we have to like split exponential like fraction. And then that would be our complete answer. We have to break down again. Okay. Our yep. that. That's our answer. But if you want to be sure, count the, the elements, right? I always say count the elements. It's better to be safe than sorry, right? Right. It's better to you know, spend a little extra time if you're right than you're off. And then you got the seven, and we go uh, the two C2 to the H6, you put plus seven because it's a fraction, right? The two cancels yes, out. That's right. Okay. Because the two cancels out. That's two times seven halves, which is seven. Okay. 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 So let's take a uh, ten minute break. Stretch your legs. Start around the block. Okay. So ten minute break, Cornell. I'll be back. We need to talk more about. Uh, Things and then we'll we'll do one more problem when we come back. Uh, uh, that was the chemical code. Oh, also, you need to sell your soul. I forgot. Yes, I need your soul. Let me, let me find it. Thank you. 
Once they get your soul, it is not. Okay, did you also get this? And of course, you are not. Did you miss two last How's it going? So Harnell asked, when when are there discussion and quizzes are due? So you guys don't worry about your discussion, don't worry about your quizzes right now. All of that is being adjusted. I'll let you know when we're gonna start worrying about that. The only thing that you need to worry about is your homework on, on active learning and the labs that I hand out to you. Okay. So I'll I'll be fixing all of that. I'm still working on it. So okay. Active learning isn't working for you. Okay, Chris, do me a favor. Do you mind sharing your screen with me? I'll stop sharing mine. So Okay, Chris. Yeah, on Zoom. Oh, let's see. Okay. Okay. So maybe if I let me take you through the steps. So it could be that the fact that you, you did go through Canvas, did you when you signed up for it, did you go through Canvas? And also, what browser are you using? Yes. Oh. Chrome. Okay. 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 So you graduate. 
Did it work for you? Can you hear me? Yes, I yeah. can hear. You. Sorry, I'm I'm, just, I'm having just prob problems with Zoom right now. It's like it's like it keeps having this pop up that says unavail unable to establish secure connection to the Zoom. So like it has this pop up above my like half my screen that won't stop, and it's like, but it's like I can't every time I click something, it like pop up comes up and it's bothering me um but yeah every time i uh try to use the active learning it says sorry for the inconvenience but to get started with the learning course the instructor first needs to pair the course please try again later okay so what you're going to do is um go uh close out of active learning completely. okay and then go to uh the campus shell so i'm going to share my screen i'm going to take some of the process okay so when you start going to school when you start when you start okay Okay. Okay, you're going to go to modules. Uh -huh. Select module. Mm -hmm. If you go to link one, go down to where it says active learning chemistry, that thing right there. And then you're going to select that. And then you're going to load active learning chemistry and in the window. And then it's going to take you to active learning. So then that way you're going through my class, it'll take you directly to that, that one without having to enter any code. Oh, okay. I think I'm in it. What was that? I think I'm in it. You think you're in it? Yeah. Okay. Good. Sorry for the inconvenience. Oh, no, don't worry about it. Yeah, I'm in it. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? I can. Everyone else was able to get into active learning. Okay. Okay, so let's uh, do one more problem. One more, one more, uh, I should say, one more balanced chemical equation problem. Oh, 
First up. I write down the elements. Where are my elements? Okay, nice doing costume. Okay. And then So I'm just saying add two here, add two here. Okay. And then. Okay. And then. Uh, I will start with the oxygen. Okay. okay. On the same room. Okay. Uh, so. What I did, I did 12 on the traffic side, okay, 20, 28, no, excuse me, no, hold on. I did 14. 14? Yeah. On, on the reaction side. And then on the right side, I did uh, seven times four, or four for box. But I can't just put four by the acid. Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't see that. I didn't even see that. Okay. Start again? Yeah. Okay. Anybody else want to put a track on these four things out? Yes. Uh, so I think you put uh, a seven, a fraction, so seven over two next to the zero or O on the left side. So seven over two? Yeah. Okay. And then, you want me to keep going? Yeah. Okay. And then you multiply the whole thing by two. Okay. And then you spread it out. Okay, so we'll go. Okay, let's check it. Be sure. So how many nitrogen do we have on the reactant side? Four. Four. How many oxygens? How many nitrogen on our product side? And how many oxygens? That looks like the right answer to me. Done. Questions? Concerns? 
cash. No cash? Come on, where's my million dollars? So wait. Okay, so how are you guys feeling about balanced chemical equations? Just need some practice? Oh, like that homework, right? Oh, okay. Okay, so let's finish up uh, the lecture. We'll go back to the lecture notes. We're going to try to get through as much as we can. We're probably going to have to pick that up. Monday. Yeah, not Monday. Wednesday, because Monday is lab day, right? Or clean. Remember. Okay, so the things that we are gonna be working with, we call them, we'll either call them equivalencies or we'll call them conversion factors. So again, when you're working with conversion factors, you're not gonna use those to determine significant figures. I know we still haven't really gotten to the nitty gritty of a significant figure, but we will, okay? Now, equivalencies is just basically saying that two things are kind of equal to each other, right? So for instance, if I tell you I drive 17 miles per hour, so I'm saying that I drive 17 miles per one hour, right? So that kind of serves as an equivalency for each other, okay? Now, equivalencies can affect our, our, our significant figures, where conversion factors won't, okay? So here, I want you guys to write the equivalency and the conversion factors for the following. One day is 24 hours. So how many different ways can you say that? One day is 24 hours. Twenty-four hours equals one day. So we can say 24 hours equals one day. Okay, any other way? Can I just say 24 hours over a day? Can I say it the other way? Okay. Now, what about my car averages? 17 miles per gallon. Am I? I just said slash one, one gallon, GL, GL, one gallon. Okay, any other way? Well, they, they told us it's 17 miles per gallon, so they kind of set it up for us. So that means that we have the gallon in the bottom. Okay, questions? Okay. Okay. So you guys, we've already done it already, but these are the steps that they, they recommend that you guys use. The first thing that you always want to do is write the quantity. That means your value and your units, right? And then you're going to write the properties of the given quantity. And then you want to write the properties of the one quantity. Okay. 
or describe the properties that we want to quantify. Okay. So basically, if we had 672 hours, we know that that is in time. Okay. So if I want to change my 672 hours into weeks, my given is going to be what? Hours. It's going to be that 672. So I'm going to start off with that. I want to get to what? Weeks. Okay, how am I going to get there? Okay, so you're just going to go straight from an hour to a week. You guys know how many hours are in a week? 168. Yo. <laughs> Okay, so Google it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we can go 24 hours for one day. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. Okay. So there's 24 hours. An hour should be on the bottom, right? Since I've been writing it on the bottom. <laughs> yes, because now I'm dating days. She's hot. Okay, so we have our one day. Okay, and then days to week. Okay, so then how many days are in a week? Seven. Is that going to be on top or on the bottom? Okay, so we have seven days on the bottom and one week on top. Okay, so hours cancel out. Days cancel out, we're left with just weeks. So we have 672 divided by 24, then divide that by seven. What do you get? How many? Four. I can't understand. Four. Four. Hard of hearing, I can't hear out of my ear. <laughs> Okay, questions. So, how many sig figs should this have? Are you sure? Yes. Put money on it? No. <laughs> Come on, I, my tank is empty here. <laughs> yes, the correct answer is three because we started with three. Days to hours is a conversion, right? Are those conversions? And what did I just say about conversions? Okay, so then I should, the actual answer should be 4.00. Okay. Okay. That's yeah, easy. We're going to move forward. You guys can do this one, right? Plus it's in the Okay, here's a hard one. A little girl breaks her piggy bank. Inside she finds 2,608 pennies. How many dollars does she have? So set it up the way that we would set it up. So my given is my conversion. Okay. So, so pennies are going to be on top or on the bottom. 
Got 100 pennies on the bottom. Cash money on top. Dollar bill. Okay. What do you guys get? Jerry told me it was 26 point what, Jerry? Okay, questions? Piece of cake, right? Not, not too bad. Okay, let's add more. Please briefly discuss the metric unit. So we all know that basically everybody in the world uses the metric system, except us, but we use it in science. So we often will use it in science and it's the thing that everybody agreed on. So when we make reference to SI units, it's called international standardized units or SI, okay? So we know that it's based, it's, it's base units. So for instance, we will have the prefixes. Those prefixes pertain to mass, they pertain to length, they pertain to uh, volume, they pertain to pretty much anything. Seconds, we can do, or time, you know. So we can use those prefixes for everything, okay? So like a centigram, right? It's still gonna mean the same relative to a gram, okay? Or if we have a centiliter, it's gonna be the same thing relative to a liter, okay? <laughs> Um, so we know that it's often base of 10, right? So kilo is going to be a thousand times greater than that base unit, okay? Where milla is going to be one one thousand less than the base unit. And so here's those prefixes, right? So we have tera, giga, mega, kilo, hecto, deca. So our base unit being either grams, meters, or liters, or we could say seconds, then we would say deca would be 10 greater than that base unit. Hecto would be 100 greater than the base unit. Kilo would be 1,000 greater than the base unit. So what we talked about last week, right? Okay. Mega, 10 to the 6. Giga, 10 to the ninth. Terra, 10 to the 12. What I can't remember last What is it? What is it? Now, small units, deci is going to be 1 tenth, less than. Centi, 1 100. Milli, 1 1000. Micro, um, 10 to the minus 6. One, one million right? or one, one yeah, million. And then 10 to the ninth uh, for nano and 10 to the 12th for pico. And I also told you which one. You guys remember? Okay, and that would be 10 to the minus 10 to the minus 15. Okay. You guys are falling asleep on there, actually. I can see it in your eyes just a little bit. How are we doing on time? Give me, give me 10 more minutes and then I'll let you guys go. Okay. <laughs> okay. Mass versus weight or mass. 
Okay, so mass is going to be the quantity of matter. Now weight is going to be the measurement of the gravitational force on the body. So if I ask you, your mass, is your mass going to be the same on the moon as it is on the earth? Your mass. Yes, your mass is, because it's going to have that same quantity. Both on the moon and the earth. But your weight, is your weight going to be the same? No. Okay. Because it's dependent on the gravitational force. So the SI unit for mass is going to be your kilogram. Uh, the base unit for mass is grams. We're going to often use grams because. A kilogram is quite a bit to be working. Okay. Um, in terms of length, meters is uh, going to be our SI units. Kilometers is kind of like what we see, right? You know, in terms of the miles, that's going to be our longer part. And then centimeters and millimeters are going to be used for the small distances. Okay. So one kilogram is going to be equal to 2.2 pounds. You guys already know one inch equals what? How many centimeters? 2.54. Small refresher, right? Kind of already talked about it. Okay. The cubic centimeters or cc's or cm cubed, same thing. So one cc or one cubic centimeter will also equal how many milliliters? Any of you guys remember? We discussed this. Milliliters? One. And we've all heard of the CC before, right? The cubic centimeter, right? Five CC stat, right? Okay, so these are all examples of volumes. So when you're measuring the volume of a liquid or the volume of a gas, that's what we're making reference to. Okay, and the base unit for volume is liters. Milliliters is a small amount. Kiloliters will be a huge amount. Okay, so this is just kind of give you an idea of what we we're making reference to. When we talk about volume, we always talk about the volume of a square, right? Or a, oh, sorry, of a cube. Does it make sense? You know, times width, times height, right? Okay. And then, so this kind of gives you an idea of how it pertains to the volume in terms of liters, right? So here, this represents one cubic centimeter. So this would be a thousand cubic centimeters. Okay, in this direction, this would be a thousand cubic centimeters in this direction. I mean, a thousand cubic millimeters in this direction. A little less gap there. Per so one milliliter is going to be equal to 0 0.001 meter, which is also going to be equal to centimeters. So in other words, one liter is going to be approximately a thousand cubic centimeters. It's going to be a thousand cubic centimeters. So just like we talked about earlier, we can sit there and flip those conversions, right? So we can have, say that we have 100 units over one kilounit. Or we could say we have one kilounit over 1,000 units. So that 1,000 units over one kilounit and one kilounit over 1,000 units. 
or we can say the same thing in terms of the center. So 100 center units over one unit equals is the same thing as having one unit over 100 center units. In other words, we could flip it either way to get our equations the way that we need. Okay. Ah, uh, you want to set one question mark. One. I, I don't understand the question. Oh, that was from earlier. I'm sorry. Oh, the last slide, it was one liter. It's going to be equal to how many cubic centimeters? A thousand feet. Yeah. Okay. How many grams are in 0 0.711 kilograms? So what is my conversion factor? So if I have one gram, how many grams are in a kilogram? A thousand. A thousand grams are in a one kilogram. I think right here. Okay. Thousand grams. Okay. So my starting point is what? You guys are struggling. I see it. We're almost there, we're almost there. What's my starting point? I know all you guys yell. What's my given? 0 0.711. And the units are kg. Okay? And I want to end up with grams. So who's going to be on top? Who's going to be on bottom? So we're going to have grams on top. So how many grams are going to be on top? Thousand. And then on the bottom? Okay. Multiply across. Seven eleven. Okay. Questions? Concerns? Okay. This is a good breaking point or a stopping point for today. Since you guys are tapped out mentally. It's, it's written all over your faces. Like, you know, he, he's doing this. He's just, he's got three toothpicks in his eyes and they're still going. Okay, so I'll see you guys on Monday. Kalinga. And then Parnell, I either see you tomorrow or on Friday. We'll talk a little bit more so that you guys will be all. On the same page as the planet. So. You guys have a good night. Thank you. If there are any questions, I'll stick around for a little bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What was that? Yeah, I think I already tested
Fireball gets a kill. Yeah. 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 Kilometers are collisions. So, so I'm actually working on that right now. Are there any questions? There's three of us here. Hi, Dr. Henry. I have a question. You have a question? Yeah, it's me from your. Okay. Um, I didn't catch when the discussion for this week was going to be due. The discussion for this week is not going to be due. No? No. No, so don't worry about it. So since we are meeting on Friday, or on either Thursdays or Fridays for lab, I'm going to eliminate the discussions. There's only going to be one discussion that I'm going to have you guys talk about, and that has to do with ethics. Okay. Got it. Okay. I'll see Friday there. Okay. So, and I, I, I'll get that all fixed. I, I'm a little slow. I just, my weekend didn't go the way I planned. So, no I'll get it all fixed for you. So. Thank you so much. Have you too. Thank you. Bye bye.